One of Australia's most iconic and beloved creatures could soon have a vaccine to protect it from disease. Researchers estimate chlamydia impacts about half of koala populations. They're nearing the final stages of developing a jab to treat infections. Joining me live is microbiologist Professor Peter Timms. Thanks very much for your time. So in terms of where this is affecting right now, are we talking every single population in Australia has uh, at the moment is affected by this or is it just um, half the populations and, and a certain percentage of them? Uh, yes, for sure, Tom. Um, the majority of the koalas are affected because the majority of the koalas exist actually in Queensland and New South Wales, and in those are two areas, chlamydial disease, as you said, about 50% is affecting the majority of them. So it's a it's a problem around most of the koala populations. Sure, there are a few minor places where it's probably less of a concern, but by and large, it's affecting 80 to 90% of the population. Right, and this breakthrough, how effective is the vaccine and how effective could it be in terms of how many koalas you'd be able to get it into? I mean, that sounds like quite a task. Sure. Um, we've been, you know, we've been working on this vaccine for a while now and it's a, been a research vaccine yeah, to this stage. That's yeah. why it's pretty important right now to take it from a research phase into what's a uh, production phase at, at the highest standard that's needed to get approval. Um, how are we going to do that? Well, we're certainly working at the moment with um, lots of koalas in wildlife hospitals. That might not sound a lot, but a lot of those animals, they're the ones that are under threat right now as well. Um, as you mentioned, 50% or 40-50% of those animals have chlamydial disease. And surprisingly, only 24% of the ones that come in actually can be treated and, and released. So three quarters oh, of them don't make it out. Um, we'll also be trying to work out ways of getting it into the wild populations. We're doing some studies shortly uh, to do exactly that. And are they presumably not talking about going around and jabbing koalas? Is it about a way of um, feeding it? What, 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 what sort of options are on the table, I guess? Sure, there are some more uh, fanciful suggestions about, uh, like you just said, feeding them or drones and so on. But, but by and large, vaccinating koalas you, you do have to capture them once. Um, and so the plan, right. I think, in the first instance is animals, populations that are under threat. And there are a lot of populations under threat where we're building roads nearby or we've got shopping centres or housing developments. Um, and, in, and in some cases, we do know that certain populations are declining and decreasing in numbers. In those cases, it, it is necessary to go in and do some sort of active management. Um, you know, it's not our plan or anybody's plan, I think, to, to, to capture and vaccinate the last koala in the place. I don't know where that one is, actually. Um, but nevertheless, to, to try and help the koalas that are under threat, partially because we've, we've caused some of this. We're, we're pressuring them, stressing them because of all the development we're causing. Right, and that's essentially what smaller groups of koalas and they all pass on the, the disease more. Has that been the big ramp up of chlamydia? Yeah, it's it's there's a whole range of things that are that are causing it in different populations. So you'd be surprised the number of populations that might have hundreds or maybe a thousand koalas in them, and they've been decreasing in numbers over time. Um, the estimate that they're decreasing you know, at the rate of about 24% quite regularly. So um, it doesn't take many years before a population that used to be quite healthy and maybe disease free has now got more disease than we saw in the past. So it'll be a population by population approach uh, by and large, but more of these populations are becoming closer to uh, human habitation and roads and so on. So yeah. there's the need to step in. So let's say this all goes absolutely swimmingly. Uh, works, yeah. works really well. You get it into a lot of koalas. At that point, would we have assurance that we will actually have koalas um, indefinitely? Uh, and it just depends on Obviously, you've got the preservation side and habitat, but uh, what, there are plenty of populations out there that are a long way from development and will be mostly OK. Would, would, that, would you have that sort of confidence? Yeah, it's hard to answer that question. It's a, it's a disease of a thousand cuts, I think. That's the way to think of it. And you're right, some populations probably less uh, under pressure than others, but the number of them that are in Queensland and New South Wales where there's, you know, say, 50%, um, and, you know, studies where they've been done, because they're not that easy to do, um, you know, not, there might have been several thousand koalas there a number of years ago, and now there's you know, 1,500. So we know that chlamydial mm. disease is one of the major threats. And we do know that if you go in there, and the vaccine doesn't have to cure every single koala. It's like most vaccines. If it has a degree of protection, and, and it's, we know that it's certainly safe, um, you can turn populations that are decreasing down and flatten and then back to increasing again. So it is 
possible. Um, certainly, I want to mention that habitat and other things are pretty darn important. If you haven't got a tree, uh, that, that's the most important. But with yeah. uh, disease, uh, particularly in female koalas, I didn't mention before, that in female koalas with disease coming into wildlife hospitals, only 12% of them can be rehabilitated and saved and sent right. out. It doesn't take long to work out that if you're only saving 12%, that's not good for our uh, reproduction and population stability.